Hello there, Golf Freak here, and welcome to my first Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization V, the Brave New World expansion In fact, Yes, it's finally here. Hopefully, as with Gods and Kings, I will be the first person to upload a legit Let's Play on YouTube. So, let's hope that that brings a lot of new people. And if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe. If you want to know exactly when my videos go public, follow me on Twitter. They will automatically uh, post a tweet whenever a video goes public. Um, as well as, to give you an idea how much Civ I play, I wouldn't consider myself a good player. I, I can hold my own. But uh, I have 30 playthroughs of the original Civ V, as well as 11 of Gods and Kings, and I want to say 8 multiplayer games with friends. So feel free to check those out. Um, if you guys can help me out too by uh, liking and favoriting the video. And not just this one, but all the other ones, so let me know exactly how excited you are for this. And uh, get me to post maybe a little bit faster. Uh, that would be helpful for me. You know, bring more people in. And you could also help me out uh, because my little setup here with my recording and everything is completely funded through uh, my partnership. If you guys are using Adblock, if you could please disable it. It helps me out a lot. Um, I personally disable Adblock on YouTube. Uh, even though the commercials can be a little annoying because I want to show my support to the people that I watch and uh, believe it or not it can go a long way so Anyway, I personally kept myself very in the dark with brave new world I haven't really looked up anything because I don't want to get I don't like to get Anticipated for new releases for one, but also because I like the learning curve. I like needing to You know figure stuff out for the first time that being said on top of El on top of being the let's player here uh, I'm definitely going to make more mistakes because of my ignorance. So, uh, constructive comments are always welcome. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to go over all the new sieves, and wow, that did not set. I did go in here and quickly check it out, but... Um, anyway, we have Ahmad Al-Mansur, and you guys already know, actually, now I think about it, because it'll be in the title, but whatever. So, Amid al uh, Mansur of Morocco, Gateway to Al Africa, and by the way, I will butcher pronunciations. So, um, or pronunciations, I don't even know. So, uh, please be nice to me. Uh, they receive three gold and plus one culture for trade routes with a different civ or city state. Trade route owners receive plus two gold for each trade route sent to a uh, Mordecio? I think it's Co, but uh, anyway. And then we have Ashurbanipal of Assyria. When a city is conquered, gain a free technology already discovered by its owner. Granting a city through a trade deal does not count, and it can only happen once per enemy city. This ability sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Um, especially on the higher difficulties where you might be able to militarily uh, outdo them, and they're just ahead in a couple techs. That sounds great. Uh, but, you know, in easier difficulties, it may not be worth it. Moving down, we have Casimir III of Poland. Receive a free grade social policy when you advance to the next era. That sounds really, really nice. Uh, and then we have Enrico Donadolo of Venice. Cannot gain settlers nor annex cities. Doubles the normal number of trade routes available. A merchant of Venice appears after researching optics. May purchase in puppeted cities. So from what I can tell, they can only have their capital under their direct control. And they have to basically take over other people completely. I don't know what they mean by cannot gain settlers. They just can't build them. I mean, like it's interesting. Maybe they can. I don't know. They have. They can only have their cap. Like, like this is this is a weird. This is probably gonna be the most difficult sim to play as. Then we have uh, Gaha Mada. I think that's an H of Indonesia. Spice Islanders. The first three cities founded on continents other than where Indonesia started each provide two luxury resources. Unique luxury resources. And I think they're completely unique. Like, you can't get them anywhere else. But, um, I think you get double, too. Because I think there's more than one. Well, two unique luxury resources means there has to be at least two. So you can get more, and I imagine you can trade them out. So that's, uh, that really encourages going over the water. And then there is... Maria the first of Portugal, uh, resource diversity grants twice as much gold for Portugal in uh, trade routes, which can be really powerful if you have enough trade routes. And then we have, do, 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 that's not it, is it? Oh, Pedro the second of Brazil, tourism output is plus one hundred percent during the golden ages. Earn great artists, musicians, arrive fifty percent faster during the golden ages. Now I wonder if that's on top of the normal golden age, because that could be really nice. 
and then Pocatello of the Shoshone. Found cities or founded cities start with additional territory. Units receive a combat bonus when fighting within their own territory. Now, depending on how much that combat bonus is, that may or may not be worth it. But the additional territory is really nice because um, you can kind of get a bunch more land early on, um, which is really good. And then we have Shaka of the Zulu. Uh, melee units cost 50% less maintenance, and all units require 25 less experience to earn the next promotion. Now, this 25% less experience, especially in the late game, will be um, will be amazing. It just will be. But, um, did they change the Adora? I thought she had one more ability, or if she had more than just the one belief. Huh. Well, anyway, you guys already know who I'm playing as. I'm playing as Portugal. You're welcome, XD. Um, and the reason why is because I'm going to play on difficulty 5, because once again, I'm going in very blind, so I don't really know what I'm getting into. And this is more of a learning game than a hardcore game. I will probably bump it up to difficulty 6 after this. And we're going to go in advanced setup. I should also mention that I've noticed with all of my Let's Plays, I have gotten less and less descriptive about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I'm going to try to um, state like why I'm doing everything. So um, anyway, we're playing on Epic as well because Standard's too fast and Marathon's too long. And Epic is still too fast. I wish they had a thousand turn because I think that would be a little bit better. Um, look, I just, why don't they just have a thousand turn game? I don't know. All the victory types are up. Sea level is low so that there's more land, because I, I prefer the land over water. And the resources, legendary start. I do this because then everybody gets it, and the capital becomes the best city for every civ, which makes sense, as well as it gives at least me reason to go take over their capitals, because they're awesome. Uh, I The only thing I have in advanced game options is a lot of policy saving, because I have no qualms about that. The whole reason they introduced this, I believe, was because people were like burning all the cities after getting a ton of culture, and uh, like doing it that way, but... You can't do that anymore. And yeah, so there's no real point in not letting you save your policies. Well, anyway, let's begin. Blessings be upon you, most gracious Queen Maria, protector and sovereign of the Portuguese people. As the first ever Queen Regnant of Portugal, it was your wise stewardship that protected the royal court from the incursions of Napoleon establishing a safe haven in Brazil to preserve the integrity of Portuguese rule. Despite struggling with illness throughout your reign, your efforts to ensure Portugal's close cooperation with Brazil are credited with helping that state gain its eventual independence. And for this, you will always be admired and respected by the people of both nations. O oh, noble and pious queen, Will you once again guide the Kingdom of Portugal in the spirit of cooperation and prosperity? Will you establish a new legacy, one that will surpass all those who came before you? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Okay, let me just say I can already tell that this start is going to be OP. So, thank you game, you're awesome. Anyway, we're going to look into our special units. So we have the NOW, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, melee naval unit, which excels at sea exploration. It has more movement than the Caravel, which it replaces, which is nice because I usually use the Caravel to explore. And can perform a one-time ability next to a foreign land to in earn gold and XP. So basically build a lot of them. And then we have the Fiat Tora, uh, and it looks like it's an improvement. It can only be built in a city-state's land. What? On a coastal tile without a resource. It provides you one copy of each luxury resource type that the city-state has connected, regardless of your status with the city-state. But that copy cannot be traded. Okay, that's fine. I don't care if it can be traded. That's great. It also... So it's regardless of your stat. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. And provides the same bonuses. Oh, wow. Wow. So basically, it's only worth it if you're not allied with them. But anyway, let me look at the start. Okay. So what do I love about this start? Okay, we're desert, which isn't great, but we can build Petra, which is going to be really helpful. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of floodplains around here, so it's not going to be as good as I would like. We also have fish, and we have marble. Marble is the big thing here, because it'll, it gives a 15% uh, production bonus to wonders. Um, and that, since I, build a, I like to build a lot of wonders, um, is definitely very, very big. Um, and we're next to a river, which is also good. And I'll probably be getting... Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll wait till, we get, till I actually get there. But yeah, so the floodplains aren't great. But I think I'm going to have to build Petra here just because... 
we're next to the ocean, which is good. We got a fish tile there. Um, with a stable, we'll get a bonus to production. We'll be able to build a stoneworks, which is great. Yep. And um, also, for those of you who, who have been following me for a while and watching my Skyrim, you know that um, I do a little f uh, thing with uh, speech macros. So I can do stuff like found a city. And uh, use my voice to c control uh, my games. And by the way, it's completely free. You just have to activate uh, Windows Speech Recognition and download Speech Macros. Um, and then you just have to create the uh, respective hotkeys for what you say. So you should check that out because it's pretty nice. Anyway, I always start off with a monument. I don't think that's going to change much um, because, you know, I, I the culture uh, effectively, uh, how should I put this? It compounds. And also, I've seen a reason why not to do my normal start, which is writing, because I like the Great Library. As well as I want poet or pottery as well. And I'll go over the, like, the new text and stuff later. Did they lower the requirement for Golden Age? Maybe not. Ruins! We've got a nice mountain over here. You know, if I, if I can find a good sea location right over here, that might be worth it. And we got lucky we found some ruins early on. Ooh, I'm liking the look of the area over here. Oh, we get pottery! Wow, okay. So that was a waste of two turns of tech, but you know what? I will take it. I will take it. Wow. Okay. And I could start looking over here. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh... Oh boy, Barbarian Encampment. So I don't... I know that there are trade routes in this game, and that river doesn't look like it connects. And I'm wondering if the river... I think it's only um, the ocean, and only if you, like, you bring units and stuff to it. But I wonder if, like, rivers do it, like, in Civ 4. Like, that would be nice. I like this music. Hmm. City here. That's what I'm thinking. I'm too away from the mountain. To build the unique wonders eventually. It's not too far away from my capital. So the only interesting thing about getting pottery so early is now it kind of messes me up because I have like everything to build now. And we meet America. The United States. Probably the worst Civ in the game. Did they see him find me? Oh, they found me from over here? Interesting. I want to make my way back. Old Faithful! Gain plus three happiness within your borders. Okay, that will probably be worth it. It's not that far away. And I could probably throw a city down over here. Put the city over here. City here. Now, if you're another tech, I mean, I don't want you to be riding because that's just too much too quick. But if you're another tech, that would be wonderful. Or pop. I just, okay, that's great because I just grew too. So, um, that's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's perfect. The only thing I would have probably preferred would be something like Faith. Because that would give me a slingshot on a religion. And I'll get the Pantheon that I want. Possible city location on the coast. Okay, next up is a Shrine. I want. I do want to get my faith going. Um, I 
Interesting. There's not much over here. So I kind of I kind of like this where I'm at too because it doesn't appear to be a lot of land around me. And that's good because uh, it means that there's not a lot of places that I can kind of get like a double double sided. So I don't have to worry about two fronts. Ow. Oh my gosh. See old faithful is up here. City right over here. Put it on the desert tiles as well. Yeah, we got so much desert. I think America's already pretty much cleaned up this area, so we're gonna move back up. We got double wheat. Wow. Okay, adopt a policy. Now we have all these new policies and or all these new stuff on top of everything that we already have. Um, that's interesting. So I'm going to look through these and see if there's anything different. So we have tradition. Um, great engineers by finishing tradition. I like that. Okay, that's much better. Uh, we have to finish tradition, of course, first. But that's that's I like that it's in here. Adopt a tradition. Increases the rate of the border expansion in cities. Okay, on top of the three culture in the capital, unlocks building the hanging gardens. So that means that I can start building it, I'm guessing. Anyway, aristocracy is the same. 15, plus 15% 15 production when building wonders, plus one happiness for every 10 citizens in the city. Legalism's the same, plus four. Uh, or four. Your first four cities have. Your first four non-captured, I believe it is, get a free culture building. Or the next one, you just don't have the tech for it yet. You get it when you get that tech. Oligarchy units require no maintenance if they're in a city and, and the garrison gains 50, plus 50% 50 ranged. Oh, the city gains 50% range. Combat strength is the same. Monarchy, plus one gold and minus one on happiness for every two citizens in the capital. And land elite is also the same with plus 10% growth and plus two food in the capital. So tradition sounds nice. Uh, Liberty. Um, adopting Liberty provide plus one culture in every city unlocks building the pyramids. Okay, wow, they really changed some stuff up. Grant a free great person of your choice in the capital after you adopt all of them. Um, Rep Republic's the same. I'm just going to go through these. Collective rule is the same. Venice receives a merchant. That's interesting. Citizenship's the same. Representation's the same. Meritocracy is the same. I believe the minus five wasn't there, though. The minus five percent unhappiness from citizens. An honor. Adopting honor gets a plus 33% combat bonus versus barbarians. And notifications will be provided when new barbarians can respond. They gain culture for the empire when each barbarian is killed. Wow, they put that first. Like, I was thinking, before this was one of the policies or finishing it up, I don't remember. But the culture off the bat might make honor worth it. It just might. Because, like, it's, it's like... That's interesting. Adopting all policies on a tree will grant gold for each enemy unit killed. They'll also allow the purchase of great generals with faith. Oh, that's quite interesting. Piety. Adopting piety allows you to build shrines and temples at half the usual time. Unlocks building the great mosque of Dijonais, I guess. Adopting all policies in the piety tree causes a great profit to appear, and holy sites provide plus three culture. Um, so that's... That's pretty good. Organized religion's the same. Theocracy is the same, except for the holy sites, I believe. Religious tolerance. Pantheon belief bonus of the second most popular. <gasps> wow, that's cool. Um, many of heaven, 20% discount on all purchases of religious units and buildings with faith. That's changed. And reformation. If you if you found a religion, gain a bonus reformation belief. Wow, that might might make piety worth it. And you can have the you can have piety up and everything else too. Apparently, it doesn't say that these two are ex are exclusive anymore. Patronage. Um, the influence degrades twenty five percent slower, which is the same. Adopting all policies in the patron tree will cause the city state to occasionally gift you a great person. Okay, and that's instead of the, that one down there. Philanthropy is the same. Uh, scholarism, or or scholasticism, Sco scholastic. I don't know. Whatever. All city states for allies provide a scientific bonus equal to 25% of what they produce for themselves. That might have been 33% before, but I'm not sure. 
Uh, consulates, resting point for influence while city states decreased to 20. I believe it was 10 before, but I could be wrong. Cultural diplomacy is the same, I believe. Merchant confederacy is plus one gold for trade routes with city states. That's not bad. It's not really that good, but it could be if they're not worth that much. And we have aesthetics, completely new. Improves the civilization's ability to generate culture. Adopting aesthetics allows uh, you to earn great writers, artists, and musicians 25% faster. Unlocks the u a unique building. I'm not even sure what that is. Adopting all policies doubles the theming bonus you receive from museums and wonders. It also allows the purchase of great writers, artists, and musicians with faith. Uh, cultural centers construct monuments, amphitheaters, opera houses, monuments, and broadcast towers 50% faster. Flourishing of the arts. Culture increases 33% in all cities which have built the world wonder, and the empire immediately enters a golden age. Fine arts. 50% of excess happiness is added to the turn. Each turn to the amount of culture that may be spent on social policies. Okay. Artistic genius. A great artist appears. Ethics. Reduces the culture cost of future... Okay, so this is this has basically become piety, except it's completely culture, and piety is now pretty much completely faith. Commerce. Adopting commerce boosts the gold output in capital city by 25%, unlocks Big Ben. Adopting all policies in the commerce tree will grant plus one gold from every trading post and double gold for great merchant trade missions. Wow, that could be really OP if the trade is the same. And it allows great merchants with faith starting industrial era. I like how that's after you've completed it. That's interesting. We have exploration. Exploration enhances your ability to spread your empires over the sea. Adopting exploration gives plus one movement for naval units and plus one sight for naval combat units. So that's basically the great um, lighthouse. Adopting all policies allows you to see hidden uh, antiquity sites. It also allows the purchase of great admirals with the faith starting industrial era. Interesting. Maritime infrastructure plus three production in all coastal cities. Plus one happiness for each harbor, seaport, or lighthouse. Navigation school. A great admiral appears plus two movement for all great admirals. Great admirals are earned 25% faster. Merchant navy. Plus one gold for each harbor, seaport, or lighthouse. Treasure fleets. Plus four gold from all your sea trade routes. Wow. That's a little better than the plus one from the uh, city-states. But then again, you get them both. That's plus five. Rationalism. Adopting rationalism will grant a 10% compared to 5% previously. Uh, when the Empire is happy, unlocks the Porcelain Tower. Adopting all policies in the Rationalism Tree will grant a free technology and allows the purchase of great scientists with faith starting in the Industrial Age. Thank you for... Or, Industrial Era. Thank you for clarifying that, by the way, because before they never clarified that. I don't think they did anyway. They have uh, Secularism, which is the same. Humanism, where scientists earn 25% faster. Free thought is the same. Sovereignty is the same. Scientific revolution is the same. All right. So... This allows the hanging gardens. I don't know if this changed or not. Uh, but anyway, what I usually do is usually go for tradition and then liberty. The reason I go for tradition is because it slows down the next policy by about, or the like fifth policy by about five turns and speeds up the next one significantly because right now it'll double my culture. So I'll get there in half the time. And by doing that, I'll also have access to these three if I decide I need one of them. And then I go down liberty in order to do a quick expansion with collective rule. Um... So yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to get Tradition. And I'm actually going to go ahead and cut the video off here and start uploading it as quickly as possible to get it out there. So, thank you all very much for watching, and God bless.